and very much for attending Alt-Sultan's latest webinar. My name is Rob Henry. I'm Director of Marketing for Ultra Consultants, and I would like to welcome you to today's presentation on electronic batch records for the biotech and medical device industries. And today we're joined by our friends from Merit Solutions for this presentation. Before we get started, just a few guidelines for this session. The phones are muted for the duration of the presentation until we get to our Q&A period. However, at any time during the presentation, you're welcome to ask questions and you can use the WEX Q&A or chat features in order to do that. So just type in your questions or your comments in chat and Q&A, and we will some on our end and be able to address them during our Q&A period. Also during Q&A, if you'd like to ask a question directly, and I can unmute your audio to do that, you can click the RAIN button, and see that, I'll see that on our end, and I'll unmute you, and you can, and you can ask a question directly over the phone. You can use the uh, positive or negative buttons on the right of your screen to maximize or minimize your screen as necessary. So just uh, brief our agenda for, for this afternoon's presentation. Uh, I'll provide a brief overview of Ultra Consultants, and then we'll get into our presentation and demo from Merit Solutions. And we have invited Jeff Richards and Alexander Jovanovic to, uh, to give that presentation. We will then to Q&A and have a brief wrap-up at the end. Agenda for today, and so I'd like to provide you with a brief overview of Ultra Consultants. Ultra is a vendor independent consulting firm, and we work solely within our clients' interests. We don't sell or promote any related ERP software or services, but rather we offer objective ERP technology expertise, as well as business process management expertise for the manufacturing and distribution industries exclusively. We serve our clients throughout North America, as well as companies with global operations, and we've been doing this since 1994. Headquarters are located uh, in Chicago. Being a uh, being vendor independent consulting firm it means two main things. The first one is that we are your partner for guiding you in your ERP vendor education and selection, and it's where we help you get to know depth the ERP vendors and the implementing practices that are best for your company and for your project needs. And then secondly, we're also your partner for helping you discover how to make improvements throughout your organization in ERP and enterprise technologies. And we do through our business process improvement services, which, which we call BPI. So our areas of expertise are in business process improvement, as well as ERP implementation management uh, services, as well as ERP technology selection, and change management too. To help you improve your business processes, we essentially do it with this basic equation. And what we do is that we look at the possible ERP systems that are the best fit for your organization, and for industry and for your business, and add to that our business process improvement services and methodology. And then, and equally important to those two, first two, is to incorporate our industry experts, our methodology, and the care we have for your project being a successful one, of course. And in these together, they make up the business performance results that you're seeking from your project. In that value proposition, and we have over 250 clients that have used this kind of guidance in both selecting and also implementing their new ERP system. So found on our clients, the users we serve and our services history. As I mentioned previously, we work only with manufacturing and distribution industries and clients within those industries. And you can see that in our list of verticals that are in the pie chart and the list below it. Uh, we have, have over 250 successful projects for, for manufacturing distribution companies. The size of those companies range anywhere from about $25 million up to $2 billion in revenue. And within those projects we've conducted, we've worked with 20 different ERP, vendor and, ERP vendors and system implementations. And as for our relationships with ERP and enterprise software vendors, our vendor independent, and we have relationships with over 40 ERP vendors across Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 categories. So we categorize vendors according to the size of companies that they sell to. And we maintain our relationships with all of these vendors in a variety of ways. We do this through our contact with vendors during our client engagements, of course. We conduct monthly vendor briefings. Uh, we have briefings with, with partner firms from, uh, for the vendors, as well as partners that specialize in an industry 
or specialize with the vendor's product line too. And we have briefings with each vendor, and we attend as many of their shows and conferences as we can to keep ourselves and our clients educated on their company, on their products, and what makes each company competitive in their PC market. And we also have a dedicated vendor analyst here at Ultra who creates and maintains our unique content uh, and also our leadership on each vendor as well. So that's a view of Ultra. And I'd like to move into our presentation from Mary Solutions and introduce today's speakers, Xander Jovanovic and also Josh Richards. And a senior consultant at Merit, and he's been working with Microsoft Dynamics AX ERP since 2004. He has over 12 years of experience of ERP consulting, helping manufacturers and heavily regulated companies transform their business with IT solutions include organizations in life sciences, food and beverage, consumer goods, and services industries. He also held numerous roles while working with Amex AX ERP systems, including functional consultant, application consultant, business analyst, product development, solution architect, and project manager as well. This is uh, excuse me, my mistake. Josh certainly does not work for Epicor. He works for Merit Solutions. That is my mistake and my deep apologies, Josh. Uh, he's responsible uh, at Merit for helping organizations identify the process and technology improvements that will help them transform their business, and he has more than eight years of experience supporting FDA-regulated organizations through enterprise transformation initiatives, um, professional evaluations, on through ongoing support. I'm going to first transfer the uh, the presentation over to uh, first Josh. There you go, Josh. All right, now can you see my screen? I can. All right. Um, thanks, Rob, for that introduction. Um, today we're here. here uh, we want to talk about electronic batch records. Uh, first, I want to go through just a quick. Um, run down who Merit Solutions is, who we are as a company, how long we've been in, in business, and then get into the, the meat of this presentation, and that's uh, electronic batch records. So Merit is a global consultant and systems integrator uh, for Microdynamics AX ERP, and then we also develop mobile solutions really for any ERP system. Um, we were founded in 1999 as a consulting firm. Uh, with with manufacturing experience, our founders and initial consultants all came from really heavy manufacturing backgrounds. Uh, around 2003, we were approached by one of the big four consulting firms uh, to help them establish and build out a, a life sciences consulting practice based on the Microsoft Dynamics ERP systems. So since 2003, we've really been developing solutions and implementing end-to-end -end systems for FDA regulated companies, from ERP to document management. Uh, and now getting into regulated um, solutions for life sciences companies. We have four offices across the U.S. and in Europe. We have about 60 practitioners, consultants, developers who are responsible for supporting our clients' needs. Um, and today, some of our clients include companies like the Jackson Laboratory, um, Volcano Corporation, Pharmacyclic, Supernus Pharmaceuticals, and, and others. I'm here to talk about electronic batch records. Uh, as most people on the call are aware, uh, when a pharmaceutical or a biotech company makes a batch of a product, <clears throat> uh, the FDA requires that they maintain a document known as a batch record. And that batch record includes all of the details of how that product was made, uh, when it was made, what lots of raw materials and ingredients were used, uh, who proved it, who signed off on it, and then physically did the work or made that product. The batch record must also show that any deviations that occurred during the manufacturing process were investigated, uh, any corrective or preventative actions were documented and implemented. Um, the importance of these requirements is that they allow consistent and uniform batches to be made that, that meet established quality requirements. And the problem does occur after the batch gets to, the, to, to market, um, batch records can then be reviewed and, and assess potential issues that, that may arise. Uh, unfortunately, what, what we see is that many early stage and, and rapidly grown companies today still rely pretty heavily on paper-based processes uh, to document every step in production, uh, 
comply with GMP or FDA regulations. Um, therefore, traditionally, every product had a binder stored somewhere in the office in which that batch record information was stored. Uh, so that's where you get the quote at the top, we produce two things, paper and drugs. Now, obviously, there are many disadvantages to this approach. Um, you have increased operating costs, you have higher risk, um, slower and inefficient manufacturing processes, and really limits the visibility that you have into the data that's stored in those documents. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about electronic batch records, which are essentially uh, mathematically generated and electronic version of those traditional binders that, that companies have. Um, but let's first discuss the main benefits of electronic batch record systems and, and automated processes. Um, first and foremost at the top, EBR systems improve process accuracy and consistency. Uh, so unlike people, unlike you and me, automated systems do a program task exactly the same way every time. So while we may have bad days, we have attention lapses, we forget minor details, we don't get enough sleep at night. Uh, automated systems aren't the same and they perform the same way each and every time. Um, EBR systems also increase productivity uh, because they perform tasks in automated steps instead of manual processes, uh, which also frees your people up to work faster and smarter. Uh, electronic batch records reduce cycle times because they enforce the consistent execution of manufacturing steps uh, while providing a real-time view of process and deviation data. So that the, the time associated with detecting and correcting and documenting deviations in the manufacturing process with the various paper documents is pretty much eliminated. Um, EBR systems also reduce compliance costs because they, they can automatically capture compliance related information. Um, they can properly organize it and then they retain information in a way that's, that's easily and quickly accessible. Uh, from that point, the biggest cost of these manual and paper-based processes is, is the people. Um, it costs companies time by manually performing tasks that, that can and should be automated. And we know that that time means money. Um, so these systems take away some of the time required to do processes, and they also eliminate the, the costs associated with, with printing, reviewing, storing, uh, and the back and retrieving those paper documents. These systems also increase an organization's ability to scale. So when you grow, you have increased volumes going through your business processes, and then variations in those processes based on um, different types of customers, different types of products or orders, suppliers. So the risks of paper-based systems are far more dangerous and inhibitive to rapidly grown companies because of those reasons. And the EBR systems improve decision-making. Um, so manual and paper-based processes store data in a disconnected and difficult-to-access manner. Uh, and because it's costly to gather that data, uh, many companies decide to operate without it. Uh, which is to decisions that are, are less optimal, um, they, still, they still take time to make, so they're time delayed as well. well. So uh, the following survey results on the screen from the Manufacturing Enterprise Solutions Association on average improvements with electronic batch record systems. Here's the proof on how business performance is improved with EBR systems. And you can see that it, it helps companies reduce costs, it speed time to market, uh, they automate compliance, and then they have better visibility from the top floor to the shop floor. Um, and you can see the payback periods range from three to, to 25 months. So there's a pretty quick payback as well for implementing electronic batch record systems. Uh, when we begin looking at, at merit in our actual EB electronic batch record solution, I want to first briefly talk about just Microsoft Dynamics AX, the underlying ERP system that, that we've extended with our MaxLife offering. Dynamics AX is Microsoft's flagship ERP solution for medium and global enterprises. It has core business functionality and then deeper industry-specific capabilities for, for financial, manufacturing, distribution, um, services, and public sector companies. Uh, Today isn't really a Dynamics AX demo, so I'm not going to get into all the, the core functionality of AX that you see on the screen. Um, but primarily, I want to convey that, that Dynamics AX is consistently ranked by analysts like Gartner uh, as an industry leader and visionary. 
Uh, more than 20,000 companies a day use Dynamics AX. Uh, so we use AX as, as the platform for our Mac Life solution. We obviously believe it's a great core ERP system for companies, uh, companies that, that want to increase visibility, uh, improve productivity and efficiency, or, or really just gain better better insight and data into their company. Um, but out of the box, AX does not meet many of the quality and compliance requirements that are levied at today's sciences organizations. Uh, so we, we want to get into our MaxLife offering. MaxLife is a pre-configured, validation-ready Dynamics AX solution that can be deployed on-premise or in the cloud. Uh, it can consist of business models, industry documentation, implementation templates, and even some integrations with third-party supply chain partners. Uh, MaxLife is a, is a pre-configured solution that can basically be dropped in and used out of the box, or it can be somewhat of an accelerator for complex or global deployments. So we can use MaxLife for areas like, like um, financials, HR, payroll, uh, but maybe your manufacturing processes are more complex and require more unique configurations so we can get into the to the, the unique configuration for those processes without using the out-of-the-box solution. Um, MaxLife also adds new functionality and extends Dynamics AX specifically for regulated organizations. Um, so it includes uh, functionality around contract manufacturing orders and 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, uh, training and certification tracking, uh, life and retest date management, CAPA reporting, uh, mobile solution development, Development of this, <clears throat> but we're we're really here today to talk about um, electronic batch records and what what we do with electronic batch records. So the MaxLife electronic batch record functionality is is designed to give life sciences companies an electronic environment that documents the execution of any any procedure, any process, any formula or recipe. Uh, it's compliant with 21 CFR Part 11 regulations. So the main ERP system that we talked about, Dynamics AX, it, it already has a lot of the detailed information on the production of certain batches. It knows uh, the information on all the components that went into the batch, all the batch numbers, who posted the consumption records, um, who recorded all the quantities that were produced, who did the testing, and all of that. Uh, so with MaxLife's EB functionality, users then have the ability really to, to quickly gather all of those details from AX, uh, so they don't need, need to go through the, the time-consuming and manual process of, of assembling those documents manually, as most companies do today. Um, that EBR document is created initially as a as a Microsoft Word document that routes through a, a full uh, document lifecycle management process, including automated workflow, audit trails, um, finding support and archiving. MaxLife then extends the, the Microsoft SharePoint-based approval and uh, electronic signature processes to match the approval of the, the final version of each EBR. So when final approval is given, a PDF is generated that includes the EBR data as well as all of those approval signatures. And then that, that PDF then becomes the permanent EBR document for the batch uh, this again is available electronically, so there's really no need for paper printouts or, or uh, cabinets or anything like that. Um, you have it all available, readily available, within your your, your business systems that you use every day. Uh, I might really like to hand over control to, to my colleague Alexander, um, who can get into the actual demo and show you what Max Life looks like and, and what it is and does. So, Alexander, I'll go ahead and pass it over. Over to you. Thank you. Um, good everybody. Also, from my side, my name is Alexander, and I'm going to uh, show you what the EBR or the electronic batch record looks like uh, from the AX perspective. Uh, going to be a, a real time uh, demonstration of the electronic batch record uh, feature. So, uh, I'm going to from uh, the quarks, which is uh, in this case the production control module. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the list of all my uh, production or batch orders. And I'm going to start from scratch. So let me 
briefly read one uh, production uh, order um, for a, a product, a red paint in this case. Um, I created a brand a new production order. Let me show you a few details about it. We'll go to the edit mode, and I would like you to pay attention to, to one of this um, uh, batch order header, which has the SharePoint URL, which is now uh, blank, and a little checkbox below, which says create web folder. I to uh, mark the checkbox, which says that I want to include this batch order uh, to my uh, electronic electronic batch record system. Uh, what happens now? Uh, what normally happens in the background is that a batch process uh, creates uh, the uh, SharePoint URL uh, and. Uh, Link, uh, create a folder on SharePoint for this particular batch order. Uh, I will not wait until my uh, um, process runs in the background, so I will cheat a little bit and uh, go to a periodic function which says create folders for web document management. As you can see, it wound up uh, for batch processing, so I will run it manually. Uh, in order to speed this presentation up. But uh, normally, uh, it runs in the background every five minutes and uh, goes through all production orders that uh, this little checkbox uh, marked. Uh, it already created a, a library on my SharePoint, which uh, contains a which acts like a placeholder for my electronic batch record. Uh, the option, of course, uh, and this strongly depends on uh, um, the of our clients, and we'll discuss the implementation aspect a little bit later, is that this little checkbox is uh, turned on by default. So basically, each uh, production or batch order created uh, eventually get its uh, library and share SharePoint for electronic battery. Uh, if you click on this little uh, icon here, it uh, lead me to my uh, spe uh, specific library just for this batch order. And as you can see, it uh, has the same number uh, as the uh, batch order that I just created. So it's really easy to uh, um, to find the specific information that we need uh, for any particular uh, batch order in the system. So in my case, this is the batch order 44, uh, and uh, the library is called the electronic batch, batch record for batch 44. Point, um, it is, um, um, it does not need documents, but we'll keep an eye on it, and uh, uh, we'll see how it changes as we progress. Uh, with the life cycle of uh, our batch. This. And, uh, details. Brief. So that we can update from the list page, which is more convenient in this case. At this point, batch order uh, has the status created. I initiated uh, 54 units of, of this particular product. I can already see from um, the map in the list page or to the, on the hand side, I already have uh, a button called Upload Electronic Batch Record. It's a little bit longer, so uh, I cannot see all the lettering, but uh, the hint is Electronic Batch Record uh, on SharePoint. What will happen is this button right now? No? Uh, that this batch order is just created and it does not have any transactions uh, ready to get. Uh, what I get is this little dialog for electronic, electronic batch records on 
SharePoint. And uh, as any uh, uh, dialog in AX, it can be uh, set up so that uh, the processing is turned on. That periodically uh, every uh, sentence uh, of the batch process, it can automatically uh, grab the specific information, record against this batch order, and upload them to our EBR. I'll not do that uh, for, for where we'll go uh, with the manual approach for uh, in order to be uh, aware of all the details. So I'll uh, run this um, little uh, process and give it a few seconds to process uh, the request. So my message says the document is successfully uploaded on the ship. I will close and I will go to my SharePoint. Navigar library, which all the electronic electronic batch records for my batch orders are located. In this case, I have just a handful of uh, uh, here, uh, each order representing a library for the electronic electronic batch record. As you see, asking four minutes ago exactly this folder for the ER44. Uh, uh, that it was empty. No, I have a Word document which we created, and uh, this is actually our electronic batch record uh, for the order, and it's going to be progressively updated with information as we progress with the life cycle of this batch order. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Sorry. So it's basically uh, just a header. No uh, information. Uh, 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 and, uh, uh, as you will see, uh, how this Word document is updated and changed. So just have a header. I will close it. And this my. Uh, Basically, it strongly depends on how um, our clock operates and what are their particular requirements. We have two approaches for processing EBRs. Approach uh, we call a partial update uh, of the EBR, in which clients um, uh, choose which particular documents for life cycle of the batch orders are relevant for the ERs, and those particular uh, don't participate in the overall building of the electronic electronic batch record. Other approaches, which uh, the one we call global, is every transaction uh, uh, transaction uh, recorded or um, both uh, batch order is uh, eventually uploaded to the EBR uh, ideally or during um, the batch processing that I uh, just for this particular demo. I will uh, show you the partial um, uh, approach. That means I will um, go one by one, one activity at a time, and uh, progressively. Uh, of the EBR with the relevant information. So let's move on then. Uh, let me start this uh, batch. We'll skip a few steps of the life cycle, such as release, schedule, etc. And we'll start this production. So you see this is now changed to start it. Um, this uh, in AX, this allows me to. Uh, transaction against uh, this batch order. So I will move to my tab. Particular case, uh, the picking list that helps me consume raw materials or components of the finished good is created automatically. 
I can click the lines. As you can see, it has just one component. Uh, so paint base, 54 gallons. I will check post. So simply all this. We are not here to discuss uh, standard chairs. And as you can see, this particular English is posted. Uh, uh, button, update the electronic batch uh, uh, record of, on, uh, it is available for my picking list. Uh, I'll click it. Again, uh, manual or automatic, it's a question of uh, preferences. Let's go with the manual approach for this demo. What it actually does now is uh, it Application uh, uh in this picking list uh, to the electronic back track. You can see it is uh, successfully uploaded to the SharePoint. Um, the process in AX can be that uh, I can have multiple picking lists, or I can have this picking list with multiple lines uh, processed in several turns, and uh, for consume a part of the component, and then a few minutes or a few days later, I consume the rest of it. So the question of uh, the approach and the process that, that our client has is when, at which particular point, we want to, uh, to update the electronic, electronic, electronic batch record. Sorry about this. will help. Um, uh, our recommendation is that the electronic upload should uh, happen at the end of the process, but again, uh, um, pretty customer has different uh, requirements, so it's, it's up to them to decide when, at what particular point they want. So, uh, um, uh, look what happened. I believe. Uh, Click on upload the electronic batch record. I can see the same Word document that we uh, saw a few minutes ago now changed. I um, have another uh, pattern added to, to, to the document which says big list journal. And uh, in the uh, next page, I have the picking list uh, information added to. Uh, electronic batch, electronic batch record. Now, uh, information to the EDR is actually con uh, whatever is contained in the standard AX uh, report. It's just as if we uh, ran the pick list report from our standard uh, AX. Uh, and uh, if we identify uh, the output of the standard picking list report, it will also be modified uh, PR. So just that in mind as we progress, because we'll see different reports added to the EDR as we continue, because uh, some of them are uh, uh, layout, and some of them have uh, modified layout, and uh, it will be visible in the EDR. We'll close again and move on with the life cycle of my batch order. Activity, for instance, can be <coughs> sorry, uh, processing uh, of my route card or job card in which basically report uh, the activities or operations uh, performed uh, during the manufacturing process. In particular case, uh, the uh, route card is not automatically created, so I will quickly uh, create one. Um, just uh, uh, with one operation, for instance, the operation 44, and say, well, it took me uh, 10 hours to, um, to process this particular uh, operation, and I'll post my... Uh, The same story as 
with the picking click, I can have a multi cart, a job cart, uh, and question of uh, uh, my particular process is at which point I will want to upload my uh, electronic electronic batch record, after, after every operation reported, or, or at the end of the process, will all my operations are reported against this batch record. So let's at this particular point. We upload it, close my card, and see what happened to my document. So the card report is right after the pick list report. Out card with the information about the operation consumption in, in short. The so production cycle is now over, and I'm reporting my production is finished. Uh, next, I can do it either through the journal called report is finished, or through the uh, process uh, of that will create the journal in the end, so it doesn't really matter. So let's check if it yeah. And it ends the job. Uh, I reported to good quantity of 54. And I am my uh, batch order. The sister report is finished. And it automatically created a report journal. And um, I will look for the third time. Uh, I can report as finished uh, one. Or the entire quantity, or it can be a consecutive process in which I report is finished partial quantities, and each time I can choose whether to wait till the end or to upload the electronic batch record of uh, each iteration of uh, uh, so let that now. now. And one second. Uh, um, can each journal that we saw here in the process to be processed automatically, periodically, but I don't have to do this manually each time. That's our document. Um, to this case, so the report finished journal. Batch report uh, with all the uh, information contained in standard production batch report. If we modify the, the base report, it will also be reflected in electronic batch record. I know uh, what I would like to do um, as a uh, transaction type that could be uh, recorded against uh, a batch and be uh, kept in the electronic batch record. I will just pull a quality order against my uh, new batch test, what I just made. I will test densities, find, find the quality order. I will just really go through it. I will not. Uh, uh, wait time on this. Let everything went well. Uh, quality is acceptable. And I want to print the uh, certificate of analysis uh, for my test process. So I'll create a new, new way. And in particular, for this, I uh, experiment to uh, use the electronic signature. Uh, I had uh, the same process for pretty much all the transactions that you uh, saw during this demo. I uh, chose uh, 
the scientific analysis uh, uh, to, to be uh, uh, electronically signed. Uh, this uh, electronic signature is the standard AX electronic signature, uh, and it just leverages uh, that AX features. MaxLife also has the electronic signature feature, which is uh, uh, for another webinar. It's, uh, it offers more, more, more uh, complex options, uh, multiple person signatures, etc. As I said, this is a standard AX electronic signature option, and my word is. So I guess I did. Now, uh, I want to add my certificate of analysis to the electronic batch record, the same journal. Second, to get it uploaded. Okay, this loads everything. See what happened to my document. What I said that at the end of my uh, certificate of analysis is a uh, header and the information for my testing of the density, the pass, and everything is there. Um, that's um, well, that all of my uh, batch order. Uh, once again, uh, uh, what uh, that our client can say, well, uh, I don't want any personal approach. What I wish is that, that uh, just when the batch order is complete, when uh, we are, uh, we did and we yeah, all actions uh, uh, against the batch order, then I will just upload the uh, uh, LX batch record. So what would happen then? I would basically go through the entire life cycle, that's a few hours or a few days or a few weeks, and when everything is complete, uh, I would just run uh, the upload electronic batch record and pull all the data from the documentation, all the transactions recorded against this batch order, and create uh, the same comment as we just saw. So this leads me to a few um, uh, questions regarding the implementation and approach of the electronic batch record. So uh, from uh, our experience, uh, we did not uh, two clients with the same requirement regarding the EBR, its content, uh, way of collecting data, the moment of collecting data for the EBR. So we listen carefully uh, to the needs of our clients, uh, decide at what point which particular documents need to be uh, uh, included in the EBR, and tailor the EBR system to uh, fit our clients' needs. As I uh, no companies are the same, and we have really a variety of requirements regarding the EBR. Uh, we sometimes need to exclude certain transactions from the EBR or to include a uh, kind of transaction uh, to a electronic batch tracker, such as a Kappa or a, 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 a kind of a journal uh, rec uh, recorded against it. So uh, we really need to uh, uh, listen carefully to uh, what clients need. And uh, uh, it all ap uh, applies to uh, the electronic literature consideration. <coughs> Sorry. Not all documents I just showed you need to be electronically signed. Uh, or in cases, each document needs to be electronically signed. Uh, we decide that the electronic signature is, for instance, for instance, needed for the pick list. Uh, it implies that the pick list reports uh, the 
of the box AX or a, a customized report based on the client needs all needs to be updated with the field to, to include the electronic signature information. And uh, one uh, I mentioned during uh, this demo, uh, the customization of standard reports is also automatically uh, included in the electronic electronic batch record appearance uh, uh, or, or content. Uh, we are uh, done with uh, uh, well uh, changing this electronic batch record. Uh, we can start another process, which is not the topic of this particular webinar, uh, and that's the uh, workflow processing or the uh, life cycle on the point of this particular document, where it can be signed by multiple persons, where it can be uh, uh, tested through the uh, SharePoint engine, and, uh, and in a specific location where we uh, keep uh, our electronic batch records um, many testers uh, that Josh just mentioned in the opening of this webinar. So that would conclude uh, my part of the demo, and uh, I am open to your questions. Uh, I will hand over the control. Thank you. Yo. share my screen and thank you again and also Josh thank you very much as well so just a review of our agenda so far we uh, of course had uh, the introduction by me of ultra consultants and a brief overview of the company a terrific presentation demo from both Josh and Alexander on electronic batch records and now we're going to move into Q&A so um, I know we had a couple questions come in from uh, and you'll have to excuse um, on your end if you see some gray boxes just me uh, opening up my windows here to see if we have any uh, questions. So I know we had a couple questions come in from um, from Judd Price, who is our vendor analyst here at Ultra. And uh, bear with me a moment while I get the uh, the chat window back up so I can relay the questions to you, Alexander, and also to Josh. So to our uh, to our audience too, if you have questions, please uh, send those in. Uh, you can use Q and A or chat features, and I'll see them on my end. And we'll get to them uh, get to them right away. And I can also unmute your phone if you just want to ask a question directly. So you can do it that way as well by ra by clicking the uh, raise hand button on WebEx. All right. So, um, so from Judd, Judd's first question is uh, uh, with integration capabilities with standalone MES systems. Uh, what MES systems does Merit have experience integrating with? First question. Did you hear that question? I was uh, on, your, on my laptop. Um, well, um, <coughs> uh, uh, we uh, recently um, uh, had uh, regarding AMIS uh, integration. Just if you can help me. Uh, with uh, with that as well, uh, uh, I'm not uh, really sure, and I don't want to give you the wrong information. Uh, if it's uh, not a problem, I would like to circle back and uh, come later uh, with this information. We uh, had multiple vendors for the MES uh, MES integration for uh, for several levels of. Uh, uh, even for the level and the uh, just the uh, shop floor level, but uh, the vendor names I would really like to come back to you with uh, with the details later. Sure, Debbie. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, Judd's question was: uh, What does implementation look like for a company going from paper based to EBR? Uh, maybe in particular data transfer. So I asked the question: Is what do we? Uh, is there, just a clarification is the question, what do we do with the existing paper records, uh, uh, transfer them to EBR, or did I end it 
Right. Yeah, I'll unmute you, Judd. Do you want to uh, address that question directly, Judd? Maybe provide some clarification. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. That's, that's what I basically was asking. Yeah, just how does that look going from, you know, completely paper-based system to, to EBR? Um, you know, what, who all the data transfer? How does, how does that happen? Well, uh, <laughs> two aspects to this. First, we have uh, the existing historical uh, electronic batch records, which are uh, which are uh, in those fa now famous binders uh, on shelves. Uh, those uh, uh, can be uh, uh, different depending whether the corresponding uh, orders are historic imported uh, into X or not at the beginning of the implementation. Sometimes we simply don't uh, import uh, the, the old ended batch orders to AX when we start the implementation. So no point of uh, transferring those EBRs as well because they don't have a counterpart in AX. So we, however, uh, import uh, the uh, uh, historical batch orders to AX, which is not so common. Uh, normally, our clients keep their all EBRs uh, in the old weather on PDF or microfilms or whatever they choose to, to add their material. But if we uh, if we do um, migrate uh, the old and the batch orders to, to the new implementation, uh, we simply uh, have the, uh, as a part of the data migration, we create uh, the uh, corresponding uh, libraries or folders on the SharePoint and uh, uh, send manually transfer the PDF to the corresponding place, so historically speaking. And then, as a second part of the implementation, we uh, speak uh, carefully with our uh, uh, is asking uh, details about what exactly the content of their future electronic batch records and how do they want to uh, treat them uh, either uh, to lie with AX and then tailor, as I said, uh, the EBR to capture uh, the directional data from uh, the batches from AX. But the question is on the more on the data migration approach, whether they will or will not migrate the uh, historical information along with uh, their, their data migration. Okay, Alexander. Uh, one quick question from me, Alexander. What about electronic signatures? How do you uh, how do you deal with, with those? Well, each uh, uh, um, shows you in AX. Uh, can be uh, configured to require uh, a level of electronic signature. So we leverage the standard uh, AX electronic signature framework, uh, which is uh, relatively uh, simple, uh, and it requires one uh, person uh, to uh, sign the uh, uh, record at the point, whether it's uh, at the creation of the record, or specific update of the record, meaning change of value of a particular field in the record. Uh, quite simple and straightforward, and uh, sometimes it just, just does not uh, fulfill all the requirements of our. Class. So, uh, as a part of Next Life, we have a Next Life electronic signature, which is, uh, as I said, a very interesting topic for one of the future. Uh, webinars where we have uh, multiple designers uh, at different points in time and we uh, have uh, uh, much more options to sign uh, each document using the uh, uh, Mac Life electronic signature, which, uh, as I said, is more uh, diverse and more elaborated than the standard index. But uh, basically, every record uh, in and uh, uh, even every field changed uh, the record killed by uh, or, or the electronic signature. Okay. 
Well, I don't have any other questions uh, coming in, so I'm going to close the screens and uh, just press on with a few final words. Um, and thank you, Alexander, for those responses. Uh, a few You're final welcome. words on uh, contact information and resources uh, that you can uh, that you can leverage uh, for additional information. As you see there, contact information, if you'd like to contact uh, Merit Solutions. Uh, Josh Richards was our initial speaker today, and his email address is there, jrichards at meritsolutions.com. If you have questions about Ultra, you're welcome to contact me, uh, Rob Henry, at rhenry at ultraconsultants.com. As far as resources for further education and investigation, uh, Merit Solutions and also Ultra, uh, we have source centers and education centers, um, and which I'll get to in just one second. And as far as recording uh, for this webinar, the recording of this webinar, you can access this recording and request it just by contacting Annalise Trimber here at Ultra. Annalise is our uh, marketing coordinator here at Ultra, and email her, and you can uh, get access to this recording that you can share with the rest of your organization as well. As far as uh, additional resources, Merit has a terrific uh, resource center, uh, which is uh, on site underneath the resources tab, and they have uh, uh, site papers dedicated to life sciences, as you see in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, a few of the titles there, as well as uh, blog entries that are particular to life sciences as well. So, just go ahead and visit their site. Click on the resources tab, and you can get to those. Uh, you can get to those uh, right away. On the end, <clears throat> we have uh, our education resources. Uh, among them are uh, recommended readings, which are, which are our white papers. Uh, we also have a uh, blog as well, as well as a listing of upcoming events, uh, upcoming webinars in the next in the next couple months. I also mentioned that we do have a uh, very robust list of on-demand webinars, which are recordings of our past webinars. So if you'd like to look at our past webinars, we do have, uh, we do have additional topics that we conducted on um, biotechnology and medical devices, uh, particularly document management and quality control. We did uh, some, some webinars on that earlier in uh, 2016 and, and in late 2015. And we also did another webinar on uh, electronic, electronic badge records as well. So those can be found on our on-demand webinars page. And all you need to do is go to that page. You can scroll through the list of available webinars, look at the synopsis, the description, the presenting vendors. And if you'd like to request a webinar, you would just need to click uh, Request That Particular Webinar. Then you're taken to a form where you provide your, your name and your contact information, select uh, for drop-down menu the webinar you'd like to, what you'd like to access, click Submit, and uh, our people on our end will get word of that, and we can get you that, uh, that recording right away. So that's how you can leverage the education uh, asset here at Ultra and, and Mayor Lucians as well. So I want to thank uh, Alexander and Josh for a terrific presentation today and for joining us and putting in the hard work of preparing those materials. I want to thank all of our attendees for joining us today. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules to do so. And uh, on behalf of Ultra Consultants, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for being here today and hope you can join us again for another webinar in the future. Until then, thanks, everyone. Have a terrific day, and goodbye. Bye. Bye.